Well, good afternoon, good people. Mark Holmes here. And as always, I want to thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. You know, it is, of course, Friday of Memorial Weekend. We've had our first two OTA practices this week. And this is a great time because now it's kind of like, you know, you kind of get your, your your taste buds, get a little taste. You start wetting your whistle. You start thinking about football. And, you know, of course, all the analysts will tell you the guys that we should have be signing or all the guys that we, we should be getting rid of and what rankings. You know, you, you get all kinds of stuff in there. And it's cool. It's cool. It's cool. It's at least... Not games, but at least it's a conversation about football. And let's be real. The conversation and the trash talk are just as important as the games. You know, there's only 17 games, 17 weeks. But we talk about football all year long. That's the thing that's amazing because, you know, as many games as there are as baseball and basketball and hockey, they don't get anywhere near the conversation about 17 game seasons. It's amazing. So for me, I want to start doing a little bit of breakdown um, for our Cowboys and things and tell you what I think um, is going to work out and what I am actually excited about for the first time in, you know, since before I even started doing YouTube. Let, let's be clear here. I have wanted the Cowboys to actually focus in on defensive line. And you can go back through so many of our failures of this team, you know, since the Cowboys won Super Bowls. And you can point to the defensive line. You know, the Cowboys made the mistake early on in Tony Romo's career, and they didn't focus in on the offensive line until late in his career. They realized we have to protect our quarterback. Then they also realized if we can get a running game, that'll help our quarterback as well. Well, we focused on edge rushers we focused in on linebackers we focused in on cornerbacks the redheaded stepchild for the cowboys has always been the defensive line they just don't they hadn't cared about it until dan quinn and rod marnelli was a guy who actually got the most out of inferior talent He'd take a George Selvey and turn him into a seven-sack in a season guy, a guy who had three and a half sacks in four years, which was great, but he never really had premier talent to work with. The Cowboys, over the course of the last two years, have actually started looking and saying, we got to look at the defensive line. And this morning's video, I was talking about who um, on the defensive line might be on the bubble. I think Quentin Bohannon and Tristan Hill are the two guys on the bubble. But I don't want to focus on those guys just yet. I actually want to focus on the guy I believe that's actually ready for a breakout year. I thought he was headed for that last year. Um, after his rookie season, you saw flashes of him actually being really good. You know, Neville Gallimore is a big guy. He's got the belly. He's got the belly. But don't let the belly fool you because he actually has some speed. And in his rookie year, he was coming on and becoming like a freight train. You know, his nickname, of course, the Canadian Bulldozer. With him on the field, if he ends up being what I believe that he can become this year. Now, now the problem, of course, last year was in training camp in a preseason game, he hyperextended his elbow. They told us, oh, he can be back in three or four weeks. Well, unfortunately, he was gone for like 12 he only played in five games last year. I think it was five. He did pretty good. He got a sack and a half in that five games. And if you equate that over the length of a season, he would end up with about five and a half to six sacks, which from an interior defensive lineman standpoint is huge. It is huge. See, unfortunately, the average football fan will equate the sacks that an edge rusher gets. You think, oh, you got to get you know, 10, 15 sacks to be effective. Yes, if you're an edge rusher, that's what you expect. But what you have to understand is the job of an interior defensive lineman, specifically like a nose guard, is to keep the offensive lineman from getting to the second level on the linebackers so the linebackers can get the glory. Your job is to hold the line, okay? That is box that tackle box to control your space your gap and not get pushed off of it that is job number one 
sacks, tackles, that's, you know, icing on the cake. But your numero uno job is to hold the middle. Because if you hold the middle, and I don't know how many times I have to say it, and I know you guys are sick of me saying it. If you can hold the middle and hold up your guy, take care of your gap responsibility, then it's easier for the linebackers because they're not getting molested by guards coming at them. They can read what's going on. I'll call you back, Stuart. Uh, they can read what's going on, and they can make the plays, boom, and the tackles. And for us, you can look at the playoffs and say there's two areas where we failed. We couldn't run the football, and we couldn't stop the run. And that is a recipe for disaster. So what I want to do here is I want to actually take a look at my man, Navelle Gallimore. Just a little bit of film study here. And hopefully the YouTube NFL police don't get me on this. But here we're going to see he's good old number 96 in the middle. And what you want to see is you want to see a guy who has strength and ability to be able to get his hands on the offensive lineman, read where he wants to take him, and fight the pressure, okay? Fighting the pressure and getting rid of the guy. So let's take a look at Novell, okay? Boom. He ends up, let, let's go back here. Let's go back here. He's out here. Watch him. He's going to hit his guy, hit him, and he's going to get rid of him. And watch him get into the backfield. Boom. That's a big man moving like a freight train. All right? Here, again, boom. Now, what I want you to notice is, you see the blue line. That's the line of scrimmage. He is penetrating. If you can reestablish the line of scrimmage beyond where it started, you are doing great. That's called penetration, and he is great at penetrating. Look, do you see that? Let's go back a little bit here. Let's look at it. Again, he's right here. He's a little bit high on here, but he's got so much power. Look at that. Boom. Gets up in there. Boom. He gets down on the field. He recovers. Now watch over here. Look at this. Boom. The big guy. You see that? You see him. You see him right here. He's going to cross the offensive lineman's face and penetrate. Boom. Gets past there penetrates find the ball carrier and eat him up for dinner that's perfect i mean we have not been able to get that kind of penetration look at that fourth down boom look at that swallow him up bam when we can get that kind of penetration from the defensive tackle now this is one of my favorite i think this is look at this look at this boom you're not going anywhere. And that, my friends, look at that. Sheds the block. Let's back it up just a little bit here. Watch him engage. Get rid of his man. Recover. And get in there on the tackle. You can't ask for more than that. Okay? You can't ask for more than that. To engage, shed the block, and get in there. Now, in here, that's this is my favorite one right here. Look at this. Okay? Watch him. I, I want you to understand that this is an all-pro center that he's going against here. Okay? He is going to take Mike Pouncey right here and drop him off. In Big Ben's lap. Boom. Look at that. Just straight power. Look at this. Boom. Mike Pouncey is just like literally just thrown backwards. Literally. Look at this. Boom. You see Mike Pouncey flying down? And then I'm going to eat up a quarterback. Boom. And then throw him into D-Law. Look at that. That is just raw power and rage. That's a grown ass, grown ass man that is doing damage now see that's what we need on this defensive line and unfortunately the first half of the season well majority of the three quarters of the season he was out injured and unable to play I he just you know, hyperextended elbow couldn't get in there and by the time you get back on the field you know you're not really having the same amount of work that's going on to get you in shape and to get you ready to play 
that my friends is literally textbook play i mean you look at this big guy he is getting ready to get into basically a contract year he is making and staking his claim i can guarantee you that this guy look at this look at him go down the line oh damn look at that look, that's just nasty look at that nasty if we could get that if we can get that my friends on a regular basis on the defensive line oh instead of us having a defense that's the redheaded stepchild um that the offense has to protect now all of a sudden you got a defense that's helping to lead this team and that my friends has been the problem you can throw it in on, you know, Tony Romo or Dak Prescott. They're not good enough. But take a look at the great teams of the Dallas Cowboys. People don't forget forget that the Dallas Cowboys had the number one defense when they were winning Super Bowls in the 90s. And then there was the doomsday defense. Can you say since the 90s that we've had anything close to a doomsday defense, anything close to a number one defense, anything close to a defense that put the fear of God in other teams? No. But I dare say that our front seven is much improved uh, from last year, beginning of last year, and definitely from the years before. And I'm excited. So the next up will be Osa in Digazua will be our next breakdown. And tonight, Tonight, we're going to be doing some chicken wings. We are going to be trying to raise a little bit more money for my brother, Stu, because Michael Anthony Fitness Reaction says, I'll do some hot wings. So if you're looking for some hot wings, challenge to see Mike burn. Yeah. Tune in tonight, nine o'clock Eastern, and I will see you guys a little bit later. I hope you enjoyed this breakdown of Navelle Callimore, the Canadian bulldozer.